When using binary numbers to represent information, it's very important to know the coding technique that you are doing. So it's always important to know the code. And let's take a look at when we encode numbers. So we've kind of talked about uh, binary numbers are used to represent uh, numbers to perform arithmetic on, etc., etc. But we want to look at different encoding techniques for numbers. So the, the simplest one, uh, the simplest encoding technique is to encode numbers as what we call unsigned. And this is how we've kind of looked at, at the number system so far. Basically, the name says it all. So unsigned means it is going to represent information starting from zero up to something. So there are no negative numbers or no numbers requiring the negative sign. Okay, so what that means is if we listed out binary, the binary code here, when we list, listed the decimal code here, to encode decimal zero, what we would have is binary zero, and then decimal one would be binary one, and then decimal two would require binary one zero, decimal three would require one one, decimal four would require one zero zero, and so on and so forth. Now, when we use binary numbers, we always talk about the number of bits we have. So notice that when we write on paper, we basically just add, add new positions as necessary to get the right you know, value of decimal numbers. But in real circuitry, we always start talking about how many bits did you need. So if you think about we, counting, we counted up to four, in reality what we had here was we had three bits that required that. So we need to define a variable, which we're going to call lowercase n, and that is going to be equal to the number of bits in a particular code. So n becomes very important. If you think about how we could use that, we can use the variable n. In this situation, we would have n is equal to 3. We can actually use that to e easily calculate the number of possible codes that we could have in a 3-bit code. So let's take a look at that. If we wanted to know how many unique codes we could have, we could use the expression 2 to the n. So we can use the base raised to n, where n is the number of bits. So in this situation, let's take a look at that. So we would have 2 to the n is equal to the number of unique codes. And for this example, we had 2 to the 3, which is actually equal to 8. <coughs> so that means we can have 8 unique codes. Now, is that possible? Well, if you look at it, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. If we extended that, we would have 1, 0, 1, and we would go all the way down to, let's draw it over here. I shouldn't have drawn that arrow, but 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So if you look at that, we had four codes up here, and we had four codes right there. We used every possible combination of bits to encode or to produce eight unique codes. So we had eight unique codes for a three-bit binary number. So that's, those codes, we can map those however we'd like. We can map those to any type of information that we'd like. When you talk about unsigned, uh, an unsigned number, what we are talking about is that the binary, the binary code starting at 000 whatever corresponds to <coughs> zero decimal and you count up to the highest value in order, in a sequence, incrementing by one, zero, zero, one, et cetera, et cetera, and that goes up to the highest number in decimal. So there's a one-to-one -one mapping in between the binary code incrementing forward and the decimal number incrementing forward also each by one. So that is an unsigned number. Again, it's just it does not have the sign bed. This two to the n is, is interesting because we can immediately know how many unique codes we have. Let's take a look at some very common you know, widths of, of data words, and let's figure out how many unique codes we have. So if I had n is equal to 8, and I said what are the number of unique codes, let's take a look at that. So this would be equal to 2 to the 8th, and that's equal to 256. If you had 16, you would have 2 to the 16, and this would be equal to 60, let's see, what is it, 60... Five, five, three, six. Okay, so it scales pretty quickly with the number of bits in the number. Okay, now the last thing that we want to look at when we talk about an encoding technique, especially when we encode numbers, is we want to look at the range of values that can be represented. So the range becomes very important. So it's not only just how you encode the information, but we also want the range. 
Now the range represents what are the numbers uh, in decimal that you can represent. And it turns out that if you think about it, the, we'll call this uppercase N for the number that can be represented in an unsigned binary code. And what we'll do is we'll say the range N of unsigned and it's going to go from less than or equal to less than or equal to the lowest number by definition is decimal zero. So it's decimal zero. And then what it can go up to the following. The expression is going to be 2 to the n minus 1. So now if you think about that, 2 to the n we just said was the number of unique codes. So for n is equal to 3, we have 8 unique codes. And that makes sense. We have 8 unique codes. But we also have this minus 1. So where does the minus 1 come from? In this situation, our example, we would say I can represent from 0 up to 7. So why is it that I couldn't go up to 8 even though I had 8 unique codes? And the answer is because we use one of our codes for 0. So remember, when we, when we do binary number systems or create number systems using a computer, we always have to account for the code 0. So in this situation, even though we had 8 unique codes, we can only represent from decimal 0 up to decimal 7. So that's where that comes from. So 2 to the n becomes one of the more powerful equations that we have in digital logic because we're always trying to calculate, number 1, how many unique codes can we have for a set of bits, and 2, what is the range? So for this one, the range of an unsigned number was 0 up to 2 to the n minus 1.